It's day number 68 of the $1,000 account challenge, and today I am up $268 in the account, or 2.32% of the total portfolio balance. Now, if you don't know, my name is Gates. I'm taking $1,000, and I'm day trading options to see how far we can grow this account. We started with $1,000. The account is now at $11,000, nearly $12,000, and we're still on the grind on the way up. I took three trades today. Two of them wound up being losing trades, but I'm still net green on the day due to two things. One, proper position sizing, and two, cutting the losing trades the moment that they didn't work, even though one of them reversed and did work for me. So straight off the day trade watch list today, we had Tesla as a long idea above $170. Over the weekend, there was a positive news catalyst that came out on Tesla uh, about some robo taxis that they will be announcing in August, and that caused the stock price to gap up at the end of day on Friday. So going into today, that gap up did sustain and what we were looking for was a break of this downtrend trend line and the move higher. So higher highs rather than lower highs. We get that on a break of $170, which is why Tesla was a long idea above $170. From here, it's just a matter of trying to find where we're going to get an entry point at. Using the one minute time frame, you know we don't trade in the first five minutes and you know we don't chase moves up. So when we get a dip pull back close to 170, first red candle offered on the one minute time frame after the break, I went ahead and took the entry. Immediately, we were up about 10%. I didn't take the profits. It pulls back. We were down, I think, over 10% at this time. And you might ask, Gates, why did you not cut the trade on a break of 170? That looked like it was a scary thing, right? Yes, it did. However, I mentioned to everybody in the alert room that my stop loss was not being placed at $170 because I wanted to give the stock room to work. My stop loss was actually at 169.5. So at 936 AM, we're time stamping this. Tesla took entry. I give you the contracts. I give you the stop loss. I give you the exact fill price. That's going to be on this candle. And I said, stop loss is what? 169.5, right? We know Tesla can be a volatile stock. I don't want to set a, top, a stop loss that is too tight. And while we were down on this dip over 10%, this was a situation where we're trading the chart and not necessarily the P&L. So by trading the chart, that kept us in this position. Tesla gets bought right back up and we get the run up into the high of day where I take my profits at 947 a.m. We will show, yep, 947 a.m. Timestamp that. That's a 20% gain. Tesla reminding you of the contracts, entry price, the exit price. And I said, you can take your profits or hold up to you. I closed out the full position there into the high of day move. Good start to the week, right? So looking at Tesla now, I'm not taking the trade up here, right? Because it just feels too extended. Tesla does pull back and I decide to take a re-entry on Tesla the moment that it starts to break the downtrend trend line. So I had three confirmations to take this re-entry long, which wound up working as you can see here, but I, I actually took a loss on this trade. I'll walk you through what happened. But first, the confirmation. So why would I take my re-entry? Number one, Fibonacci retracements. So starting from the beginning of the of the run to the top of this run, when Tesla was pulling back, breaks to the 23.6 line, it's holding the 50% retracement line right here as a point of support. So that's going to be going to be confirmation number one for me. Confirmation number two is that VWAP, this purple line, is also kind of acting as a point of support. Not exactly, right? We know that this is trading and nothing is perfect, but it's near VWAP. It's consolidating near the middle VWAP band. So for me, that was confirmation number two. Confirmation number three is the break of this downtrend trend line. So Tesla stops making these lower highs and actually starts to press up and make higher highs. So I take my entry. Let me clean this up for you. I take my re-entry at 1017 AM as Tesla's breaking that downtrend trend line. And I show you that right here. So Tesla taking re-entry, remind you of the contracts, 172 fill price. Stop loss is my swing low at 10, uh, 170.5 or one. 0.55 on the contracts, which basically is like right here, right? Here's where I made my mistake. We were up about 10% on this trade. I did not take the profits. We get When we get that move up, I move my stop loss up. So that's, that's what happened here. If I had left my stop loss at 1.55, I would have held through this dip and I would have caught this run up to the uh, close to the high of day. We would have profited on this trade. 
but because I trail stopped this up, I moved my stop loss up just a little bit. When Tesla pulled back and gave us that flash down candle, that was just enough to stop me out of the position before making this run up. So I actually wound up taking about a 7% loss on this. Um, what did I say? Tesla now up 10%. And then here's where I moved my stop loss up. Tesla moved the stop loss to 1.60 and uh, closed out there on the, on the dip, right? And then, of course, <laughs> two minutes after I close, this thing pops up and creates a higher high. So kind of frustrating there. But I wasn't at this time, I wasn't really willing to sit through the chop because this was kind of a, a position that I feel like after this move should have just started to work for us. I wasn't expecting a dip back down, but anyways, neither here nor there. We're still neck green on the day. Now, the third trade that I took also resulted in a loss, and unlike the Tesla loss, this was actually a good loss to take um, because it was a position, position that wound up just not working. So it was a short idea on SPY. Now, I know on the day trade watch list, we had SPY as a short idea below $518, but SPY doesn't break 518, it actually bounces off of it over here. So why would I go short? What I see is an opening drop that rallies up. This is a formation known as a bear flag or bear pennant formation. Either way, the stock is creating higher lows. That's the, that's the big thing to note. Higher lows are being created here. The moment that those higher lows are not being created anymore, meaning the moment SPY makes a lower low rather than a higher low, this recent uptrend is broken, and I'm thinking, I actually shared this chart with everybody in the alert room, I'm thinking that this bear flag is going to break down. So, I mean, I'm telling you this before it even happens. We're waiting to see if this bear flag on SPY breaks down. Then I kind of give you like what I think could potentially happen here. And then I took, I said, get ready. I took my entry on SPY short. So as we're starting to get a break of this uptrend trend line, boom, take the entry on SPY short. Now we're just looking for the follow through and the lower low. We're up about 10% on this trade. I think we were up actually, were we up 15%? We might've been up 15% at one point on this trade, uh, but I didn't take the profits. I was looking for the 20% move. I wanted to see a new low of day or a retest of the low of day, just looking for more here. And that kind of bit me as this reversed right back up. I went ahead and took the loss there. Originally, I had it said I think I was going to take a 10% loss on this, and I moved it to take a 5% uh, loss because, well, it should have it should have really worked from here. You know, if it was making the lower lows from here, it should have also made lower highs. And when it made the higher high, no reason to hold on to the trade anymore. Just close it out early. And good thing that we did because look at this move that followed, right? If we did not close that out, we're likely closing over here for a larger loss uh, and just not worth it to hold through on something like that. So, Net green on the day, not up by much, I will admit, but still net green. Those two losses did cut into my profit some. However, I'm still green after two losses and only one win, again, because of proper position sizing and cutting positions the moment that they're not working for me. Okay, so, you know, not letting those losses get to 15, 20, 30, 40 percent, just cutting them sub 10 percent, in many cases, sub 5 percent just to uh, make sure that we're mitigating the risk that, that we're taking on. I hope that the video has helped you out. Thank you so much for your time. Press that like button for me if it has, and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel as well, as it's just the best way to support me as a content creator. Again, thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow when we continue the $1,000 account challenge. Cheers.